Hey guys. So, thanks so much for coming to our first Life on Tap for the semester. Um, tonight's talks are about event, plan event planning, event planning, and catering. Um, so first we have Sheila Bolger, who's a graduate of the class of 2010. Um, she works for Huel Events Group. She's with Mount St. Mary's, and her work's been published in Spoken, Spoken Bride, Verily, and Darling as well, which is a pretty big deal. Um, so thank you so much, and then our next one's Mike, Mr. Mike Brown, and I'll introduce him in a minute. Thank you so much, Matt. It's so great to be back here tonight. Um, as Matt mentioned, my name is Sheila Bolger, and I'm a graduate of the class of 2010. Um, as I was stepping up here on the stage, I just realized that I think the last time I was on the stage was probably about eight years ago, singing backup harmony for a friend of mine at pub night. So this is uh, kind of different circumstances. Um, and at the time, you know, I never thought that I would have a career in event planning. Um, I never thought I would be planning events for Kellyanne Conway and Paul Ryan, um, for Bitcoin and the president of Whole Foods. You know, I, I saw myself going into policy work and being a lobbyist. Um, I had majored in political science here. So my career took a very different um, turn. So the things I want to kind of discuss tonight and, and that I hope will be helpful for you all as you venture into uh, the career world in a few years, um, I really just want to show, you know, what my career has looked like thus far, um, what my day-to-day -day looks like as an event planner, and what you can do here at Christendom to prepare for that. Um, so pretty straightforward, but uh, I'm looking forward to just sharing these experiences with you. So what has my career looked like thus far? Um, you know, it's been an interesting journey, and I think something I've learned um, through these past seven years being out um, working is that it's really important to start at the bottom and work up. So I am a big believer in learning the details and working hard and having each experience build onto the next. You know, there's no silver bullet that's just going to shoot you up to the top. And if you find that, let me know because I would love that experience. But, you know, my experience so far has really been that each, each position I've held has, has built onto the next and has laid the groundwork for all the technical skills that I've needed to have a more leadership position and be the person who's bringing that broader vision um, into, into the workforce. So um, my career thus far, um, when I was at Christendom, it really set the stage. Um, I actually, on the side here, did some events. So I worked as an RA, and I worked in student life under Tambi Spitz. And she was really a mentor to me, and um, I worked on events like RA training, parents weekend. I planned events for the students on my hall. Um, so that really, was the first time where I saw that event planning is quite rewarding. You know, you're, you're working hard um, to pull together a beautiful experience, a shared experience for some type of common goal. So I loved it. Um, but I still thought, you know, no, I want to go into politics. I want to go into lobbying. So my first real position out in the real world um, was at a lobbying firm um, in DC. And so that was, that was an awesome experience. And it, it happened kind of under the other duties as assigned that I would be planning events around the country um, because my boss was Catholic and he wanted to do charitable events for the Dominican Sisters of Mary. And so I ended up getting to do events all over the country, anywhere that the sisters were, were present teaching in schools. Um, and it really hit home. There's this very distinct memory I had when I was in Phoenix planning an event, and it was at the end of the night, and um, I was just so moved by how rewarding that experience was of putting together something um, that was technically very smooth, um, you know, no major mistakes, and that was for this broader mission, this broader purpose um, to raise money and just promote these amazing sisters who do incredible work all over the country. Um, uh, I was able to kind of participate in that bringing you know, beauty, truth, and goodness into the world, so much of what we learn here at Christendom. Um, and so that, that really stuck with me. And at the end of that year, when that position came up and I was still, you know, going to the Hill, going to meetings, pursuing that, that, that uh, world of politics, um, that memory of Phoenix where I just felt so rewarded being part of this larger cause and bringing beauty to people's lives for a shared experience. I said, you know what, I really I think event planning is, 
is the way to go for me. So I um, moved to Mount St. Mary's University and became the event planner for the president there. And that position really set the groundwork for me for a lot of the technical skills needed. So learning event planning software, um, learning budgeting, and um, speaker coordination, venue negotiation, these types of things. So that, uh, that really, that job honed a lot of the skills I needed to technically be a good event planner. Um, then I kind of had the bold idea, as a lot of Irish women tend to be bold. Um, I said, I'm going to own my own business. So I, I started a freelance event planning company, um, and I was able to gain some really awesome clients. Um, Appaloosa Music Festival, I helped start that. That happens here in Front Royal, so maybe some of you have been there. Um, I got to work with Scythian on that. Um, Marie Miller, I was her logistics and tour manager, so I traveled all over the country with the band, planning all of the logistics, working with radio stations, her record label, um, other management, so that was an amazing opportunity. Forum Arlington, it's a young adult um, concert series and art series based in Arlington, and it's, it's for Catholic and adults, and it became really successful. So all of those experiences, again, I, I kind of was able to take those technical skills I had learned and then apply them not to just one client, but to many. Um, and so that was, that was an incredible experience for me. And one of my clients is called Hewell Events Group. And I ended up transitioning into working full time for them. Um, so that is what I'm doing now, currently. So for the second part of this, this little chat, I want to talk about what is my day to day look like as a senior event planner working in DC at this event planning firm. So the firm, again, it's, it's called Hewell Events Group, and um, we plan gala dinners and conferences in DC for center-right nonprofit policy-based organizations. So we do, uh, you know, we work with Susan B. Anthony List, the National Review Institute. I'm not sure if any of you read the National Review, but it's a great conservative news journal. Um, we work with Conscious Capitalism, which is started by the the founder of Whole Foods. Um, we work with many libertarian international organizations. So, you know, interestingly enough, it kind of combined my political science studies with this new passion I found in events. Um, and so I found that it's been a really amazing niche. And um, in this role, I've been able to kind of take more of that leadership position, that broader vision, um, and use all the skills I've developed along the way um, to actually be a senior planner and manage accounts and manage clients. So what does my normal day look like? Um, for instance, today I started with a few conference calls with clients and then I went to a venue downtown and I worked with um, a few people from a printing company and we measured and planned out all the design for the installation of a huge 2,000 person conference that's happening in a couple weeks. So we went around the venue, we decided you know, what's gonna make a huge impact here, what's gonna make a good statement there, let's get the dimensions, this is gonna work in budget. Um, so these are the types of things I do on a daily basis. I manage budgets, I... Um, relate with clients and lead calls with them and their staff. I work on spreadsheets. I talk to probably 10 vendors a day, uh, caterers and florists and photographers. I'm always negotiating, trying to get the best deal for my client and just trying to advocate for them. Um, so it's really, it's really an exciting uh, path to be in. It's a very exciting um, industry and it's fast paced. You're not always just behind a desk, which I love. Um, I love to be out there meeting new people, being active. So if you're that type of person, I, I definitely would say logistics and, and event planning is a great path for you. So what can you do here at Christendom to prepare you for career and events? Well, like I mentioned, I worked as an RA and I also worked in student life. Um, so there's a plethora of opportunities um, that you can lean into here. You know, I know Student Activities Council, you guys plan, is anyone here on SAC? I know they plan probably, what, three events a week. I mean, and in that type of role, you can learn how to manage a budget. You know, you can say, oh, I think at this event, it would really be worth it to put more money into the DJ and less money into the food. Or at this one, I think we should invest more into decor and maybe not have music. So. You know, you can actually, Christendom is amazing in that they give you a lot of freedom to, to grow in those types of roles. I know when I worked for Student Life here, um, Tambi Spitz really let me 
decide all the decor for Parents Weekend, the weekend that uh, the year that I planned it. And I really uh, felt very empowered by that. And so just, you know, lean into um, the staff and administration here, um, your professors, they're here to help you. And if, if you're looking to have a leadership role, they're going to find a way to use you and use your skills. Um, so don't be afraid to, to branch out and, and ask for more responsibility. Um, you know, another thing I was, I was thinking about as, a, as I was reflecting on um, what I was going to say tonight is those all-nighters that you guys are pulling, you know, they actually are going to serve you very well <laughs> in the future because I work, uh, when it's heavy event season, I wake up at 5 in the morning and I work till midnight. Uh, it's, and then I wake up and I do it again. So, um, you know, it's going to serve you very well, the stamina that you're building pulling these all-nighters and working hard on papers. Um, you know, something that really sets Christendom students apart is our ability for critical thinking, uh, being able to read and write clearly and concisely and well and with a vision and a purpose. Um, if there's anything that ever needs to be written at uh, my company, my boss immediately just, she doesn't even try. She just says, you know, Sheila, here, here's a, uh, this program we need to write, or there's a really tough email I need to write to a client, would you mind taking a stab at drafting it? So I think as you guys pour yourselves into um, the papers you're writing here and the research, just know that when it comes time to write your cover letter, you are going to be so far above your peers. I mean, it's going to set you apart and get you an interview, I promise, um, because so many of the other contenders do not have that type of skill that you're really gaining here at Christendom. So you should be very grateful for that. It's going to serve you very well. Um, and then lastly, I just wanted to kind of touch on some of the, the moral foundations that you know, I received here at Christendom, and I know each one of you, um, you're receiving right now. So the friendships that you make um, you know, are really going to just stay with you, hopefully, your whole life. And it's going to be an amazing support system. I mean, I have a few friends here. Um, who are the younger siblings of some of my dear friends who I went to college with and who I love so dearly and we all, you know, really support each other and when things in your career get hard, that's a wonderful thing to be able to lean on. Um, the moral foundation of, um, you know, having a virtuous life, going to daily mass, going to adoration, leading on God um, in those hard moments, I mean, that is also going to show your boss your respect respectable person, you're not going to lie, steal, or cheat, you're responsible, you're going to work hard. Um, that's another thing that will set you apart um, from some of your peers. And so it's important to know that these virtues you're building up, this virtuous life, it's, it's really going to serve you very well um, in all the years to come and when you're out in the real world, so to speak, outside of the Christendom bubble. Um, and then lastly, I just wanted to also touch a little bit on um, the idea of the Transcendentals, which we learned so much here at Christendom and which Mr. Brown uh, taught me. <laughs> and it's something that has stayed with me all these years, and it's really a huge part of why I do what I do. Um, beauty, truth, and goodness, leading people to God, uh, that is really my thesis for why I'm an event planner, why I try to bring beauty into the world, because I think these events, um, people are participating in something that's larger than themselves. It's bringing them out of the mundane. It's bringing them a beautiful experience of food and wine and music and a program that's inspiring um, and pulling people together in this shared purpose. And so that's incredibly rewarding. And um, I think always having that idea that bringing beauty into the world, bringing truth into the world, it's, it's leading people to God. And um, I just want you all to know that as you follow the path um, of your career, it, it may take bends and turns, and just it's important to listen to the Lord and the Holy Spirit. I didn't think I was going to go into events, but I, I kind of kept listening to that stirring um, in my heart, saying there's something more in this industry than in politics, and politics isn't bad, and I think that's great if you want to go into it, but I do think it's important to just, you know, lean on, on those stirrings, lean on the Lord and the Holy Spirit and what he might be trying to say to you, where he might be trying to lead you. Um, and if there's anything I can ever do to help any Christendom student, I'm, I'm connected in DC and I would absolutely love to help, you know, read your resume or your cover letter, connect you to a 
you know, a company that you see you might be interested in, whether it's one of the center-right groups I work with who's a client of mine, or whether it's something in the event industry, you know, I would absolutely love to help you all. So please let me know how I can do that. Um, and I look forward to, to chatting after Mr. Brown speaks and answering some questions. So thank you all so much for, for having me here today. Thank you so much, Sheila. That was great. I learned a lot. Um, so our next speaker is Mr. Mike Brown, the favorite philosophy pe teacher of professor of everybody here. Sorry, Dr. Cut it back. Um, so not only does Dr. Or Mr. Brown teach philosophy here, he also runs a successful catering business on the side. So I'll let him tell us all about it. Uh, these are my notes. Uh, <laughs> And the reason is actually when Matt asked me back in December to do this talk, I actually thought I was supposed to speak about why you should go into graduate school and study philosophy. And then it was a few days ago that I realized I was actually supposed to talk about food. Uh, so over here, right before we got started, I wrote out a few notes, all right? Uh, but before I say what I would like to say, uh, Sheila, right before she came up, she told me she, she was somewhat nervous because she is not used to public speaking. Uh, Sheila, that, that was truly awesome. You were excellent. And I'll tell you why, it was very well, it, it was, I don't know if you guys like good homilies. One of the signs of a good homily, I usually snooze through most homilies, but a sign of a good homily is when you can walk away with one or two points and can remember those. Sheila, you did a masterful job. And also I'm gonna say this, uh, I have worked with probably 30 event planners and I know a good event planner, and I know a bad one. Guarantee you, she's the best. I could see it. So, Sheila, thank you, really, I really appreciate it. Okay, now, I'm gonna talk about the food business, all right? So, all right, first question for you. Does anybody know the end? So, being, being I'm interested in philosophy, you always start with the end. What is the end? If you go into the food business, what should be your end? And I'm sorry, I don't wanna get I don't want to get spiritual here. It is to make money, all right? <laughs> uh, okay, so if you ask me why I got into the food business, it was to make money on the side, all right? So I'm going to say it could be other things, but if you're in the business for something else other than making a living or making money, you're probably not going to succeed, all right? just want to point that out. That's not necessarily the case, all right? So that's the first thing I want to say. Second, are you able to go into the food business? Now guys, I know you've heard this many times, but this is absolutely true. If I can go into the food business and do a decent job uh, at it, there's no question that you can. Uh, and I'll tell you why. I have eaten more fast food than anyone in this room. All right. I never ever cooked a single thing until I was about 23. All right opening up a can and putting it into a pot and heating up a soup in my world was cooking, all right? And I have also fooled the world for about 15 years. You may not know this, I'm actually not a good cook. Uh, no, I'm not, I'm serious. And now what, I, what I mean by that is I do not have the art of cooking. What I'm able to do is recognize a good recipe and then in a mathematical way, I can follow it and produce a good dish. So my point is, you can do it. And she was absolutely right. A lot of this has to do with your character, with your drive, with your ambition, your, your willingness to do what it takes to succeed. Okay, now, let me say this. Uh, one of the reasons I do like the food business that I'm in is that you can do it on the side. <laughs> and what I mean by that is if you get married and you're raising a family, it is very possible for you to run a fairly successful food business on the side where you're helping to supplement your income, but it's not destroying your life. The food business can destroy your life. I know people who are just nuts because they've been in the food business too long. All right, now, now what I mean by that is, I'll give you some examples. You can get into the cake business and you could do that on the side. You could be a baker, you could bake uh, cupcakes. All right, we also cater for a number of years until like three years ago, we were catering about 15 events a year. And so we were simply catering on the side. And so I, I would say it's very possible to do it. So that's one reason I like the food business. Okay, now who should get into it? All right, first thing, you gotta like people. 
If you don't like people, don't go into the food business. Two, you got to like service. This is a service. This is a service thing. So if you do not enjoy serving people, get don't go into the business. And then third, I think it's important that you like food. I think so. All right. You don't have to, but I think it's important. You got to have the passion there. Okay. Now, is it possible that you can learn this business without professional training? I just go back to what I said. Yes, you can. All right. Yes, it can be done. Okay. Now. What does it take to succeed? This is the best thing I think I've ever heard from any commencement speaker, so I'm gonna steal it. The guy who started the inn at Little Washington, probably, definitely the number one chef in Virginia, probably in DC. At one point, he was probably the top five chefs in the entire uh, United States. I once heard him give a commencement address, and I think what he said was profoundly true. If you're going to succeed in the food business or in any business, all you need to do is do one thing. And that is absolutely commit yourself to doing one thing and doing it the best that anyone does it. So he even said, look, if you decide you're gonna make burgers and that is your business, as long as you are absolutely committed to making it the best burger, either within the county, the state, the country, or the world, you will succeed. So that's my first lesson. That's my first recommendation to you. Whatever area of life you go into, that's got to be your desire. That's got to be your drive. I'm going to be the best at it that I can be. Okay, two, I do think the food business is unforgiving, so you got to get it right, especially with social media. I, I don't know about you guys. Most people, when they check out restaurants, what do they do? They go online, see what the ratings are. I will say happily, we've gotten only eight reviews. Uh, well, what I mean by that is we've gotten eight reviews, but every one of them is five stars. Uh, and so we have uh, gotten very favorable reviews. And so we've done very little to promote ourselves, but we run a successful business largely through our reputation. And I think, I think that's absolutely essential. You cannot get it wrong. Okay, also a, a key element to the food business is learning to run a business. So no matter how much you love food, no matter how good your cupcake is, if you don't know how to run a business, uh, you're, gonna, you're going to fail. Oh, by the way, it's an interesting question. Which do you think is the most difficult business to run in the entire world, including all, if you take all businesses, guess which one is the most difficult to run? A restaurant, a restaurant. I don't know if you know this, the, a profit margin for a restaurant on average is about three to, three to 4%. So you see how much margin you have for error? Very little. Look at Front Royal, how many restaurants go out of business? Tons. And every time I see one open, I can just say they don't know what they're doing. If I, I can see whether or not that business is gonna succeed or not. So you have very little uh, margin for error. Now, nice thing about catering, your profit margin on average can be about eight to 10%. All right, so the, the catering business is a little bit better than the restaurant business. Uh, let's see here. Also, I think good communication is important. So that's the other thing. Uh, I, think, I think that's pretty much, since I only got uh, 15 minutes to prepare notes, I got to number six. So Sheila, help me out here. How should I conclude? Well, by the way, I love the transcendental. That, that, that's the reason why her, her, her talk was so good. Yeah. She, mentioned the, she mentioned the transcendentals. Yeah. Oh, I, I will say, I, I really do think the moral thing here, here's, here's, you know, one of, my father ran a business for many, many years. You know why he got out of his business, he ran a very successful business, is he could not find good help. And what I mean by that is reliable, dependable, trustworthy. If you ask a lot of business owners, that's the number one challenge, is finding people of good character. So I'm gonna say this, I've had a lot of Christendom students work for me, and one of the things I am very proud of is there's not a single Christendom student I've ever hired that I did not fundamentally trust. Now, I've had some not so good Christendom student workers, and I've had some very, very good Christendom student workers, like Leah Ross back there. You could, you could literally run a business with her, with her as your number one right-hand person. She's gonna go somewhere in the food business because she does it well. So I'm just gonna say that moral thing about your character, if you are willing to work hard, do what it takes to demonstrate that you are dependable, a trustworthy, and honest person, uh, people are going to invest time into you. They're going to invest money into you. All right? I think that's all I want to say. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much.